It happened. On March 14th, Starship, the most powerful rocket, took flight for the third time, reaching never-before-seen territory. With marvelous achievements, some new challenges to overcome, and some amazing onboard views all in between, we'll break down everything you need to know about Starship's third flight here on today's episode of SpaceX Flight. But before we get in, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another awesome episode. And with that, let's dive right in. Starship has undergone a lot over the last year. Two test flights resulting in mighty explosions, constant development, and recursive improvement in between months-long FAA mishap investigations have brought SpaceX up to this very moment. In the hours just before liftoff, SpaceX received the green light from the FAA to launch, making the launch times official. At around T-50 minutes, Starship began the fueling process much later than normal, thanks to upgrades to the tank infrastructure that have made fueling much faster, reducing time down to just 50 minutes, and finished the fueling process at around T-3 minutes. At just seven seconds before launch, the flame deflector sprayed hundreds of thousands of liters in seconds, and at liftoff at all 33 Raptor engines came to life just as perfectly as Flight 2. The engines lifted the 5,000-ton rocket off the launch pad, performing nominally for around two minutes. Onboard cameras gave us extraordinary views of space thanks to the multiple Starlink terminals installed in case one failed and a backup was needed, something that was lacking in previous flights. At around two minutes into flight, the booster's main engines cut off before beautifully separating from the ship, which carried on into space. The booster went on to perform a full-duration boost backburn successfully this time before reorienting itself upright, heading into the thicker atmosphere at multiple times the speed of sound. However, things started to go awry from this point forward as the booster traveling at Mach 1 at 2 km in altitude failed to initiate the landing burn, and the booster was swinging quite erratically, and that was the end for the booster. It was later confirmed by SpaceX that the rocket blew up at around 462 meters above the water, and that the flight termination system was not involved. Anyhow, they will no doubt be looking at what went wrong and figuring out how to fix it for next time. Things were looking much better for the ship which continued to perform nominally until the second engine cut off. Now that Starship is in a coasting orbit, it has performed never-before-seen tests while it was in orbit, such as the opening and closing of the payload doors, which will soon deploy Starlink satellites. The payload door seemed to have issues when it was closing, where it looked like it was jammed and then released. But after the flight, SpaceX confirmed it had taken place successfully in another attempt that we didn't see as per their website. The in-orbit propellant transfer test was also confirmed to have happened, thanks to updates on the NASA website. One of the last crucial tests they skipped was the Raptor engine relight demo, which was not attempted due to the vehicle roll rates during the coast, which happened to be an issue when it was time for the ship to re-enter the atmosphere, as the vehicle was not in the correct orientation during re-entry, possibly due to a problem with the reaction control thrusters designed to orient the vehicle, which caused the ship to be at one point, tail first into the fire. So sensitive components, including the Raptor engines, were being exposed to the oncoming atmosphere. The live feed and telemetry continued for some time during re-entry until the signal was eventually lost. Signal blackouts are expected during re-entry, as plasma interferes with the signal trying to get beamed out. But unfortunately, the NASA tracking satellites also lost track of the spacecraft, making it very likely the rocket burned up as it re-entered the atmosphere which was later confirmed after the launch on the company website. Nevertheless, this was still what the company calls a successful test flight, simply because it made much more progress over the last two, keeping in line with the company's design and development philosophy, and also pushing the limits of what is possible. That's all for today's episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment box below. We value your input and it helps us create better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.